Well, hello everyone and thanks for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Amanda Yeager. The THV 11 Summer Serial Drive makes its second stop of the week after a very successful day in Conway Tuesday. This guy right behind me here. He's in Pine Bluff this afternoon collecting cereal and donations for hungry kids. Tom Brannon live right now at the Super One Foods on Hazel Street. Joining us now with an update. How is it going, Tom? Amanda oh, Yeager, it is going quite well. I want to take a step back. We've got uh, uh, the Pine Bluff Rotary that has shown up. We're going to talk to them here a little bit later in the show, but quite a bit of cereal. Chris, come take a look at this. Lots of bins of cereal. This is from in the store. These are customers that come to Super One Foods, purchase the cereal on the inside, they bring it out, and they drop it all for us. And we certainly do appreciate their efforts uh, here this Thursday. And to give you an idea, we're going to be here all afternoon until 5 30. You got plenty of time. Put the kids in the car, bring them out, uh, teach them how important it is at an early age to give back. Uh, whether it's a box of cereal or oatmeal cereal bars, we'd love to see you. Come out to us. We're at the uh, Hazel Street location. It's 28th and Hazel or 2800 Hazel Street. There are four Super One Food locations, and they're taking donations, so you can drop at your favorite Super One Food location. More coming up in just a few minutes. Hopefully, meteorologist Scott Colvert can keep the rain away this afternoon. Scott, Amanda, back into you. All right, thank you, Tom. Hopefully you get a lot of cereal today. I mean, it's a beautiful day, Scott. People get out there, go donate. We got some sunshine and whatnot. Yeah, we see mostly sunny skies across the state this afternoon. It's just hot outside. Temperatures have really just risen up into the 80s. We have a ways to go before we reach those highs. Here's live radar. It looks dry, but if you take a real close look, we do have some really isolated showers developing. We've seen this trend over the last couple of hours as we scan the skies of the natural state. If you're one of the lucky few that sees one of the showers, maybe even a thunderstorm today, it's likely to cool you down. In fact, if you look to Mountain Home where they've seen some of that rain cooled air moving through, it's likely to drop your temperatures quite a bit. In Clinton this afternoon, the temperature's 90, but when you factor in the humidity, it feels like 100 degrees. Similar situation in Russellville this afternoon. In Little Rock, it's currently 88, but it feels like 91. 92 is our high temperature. We'll see a 20% chance of those isolated showers, possibly even a couple of thunderstorms this afternoon, one of, or two of which could maybe be severe. More details on that forecast coming up. With more people getting fully vaccinated, loosening restrictions, and the summer upon us, it can feel like the pandemic is in the rearview mirror. But if you ask some of the top doctors here in Arkansas, they'll tell you mm, that's kind of far from the truth. The chancellor of UAMS describing COVID-19 as a quote, smoldering thing here in the natural state. From low vaccination rates to ICU patients increasing, UAMS Chancellor Dr. Cam Patterson believes Arkansas is moving in the wrong direction. His biggest worry lies in the amount of people not getting shots. According to Patterson, less than half of eligible Arkansans are either partially or fully vaccinated. Pair this with the highly contagious Delta variant circling and the concern grows. There's one thing that all of our hospitalized COVID-19 patients have in common. None of them have been vaccinated. And Dr. Patterson also expressed concern about the potential fall surge, saying the key will be more people getting fully vaccinated. This time last year, many pools were closed due to COVID-19, but now restrictions are easing and many are reopening. We've received some questions from you guys asking if public pools are safe for kids, particularly the ones that are unable to get vaccinated yet. So let's verify for you. According to the CDC, yes, it is safe for children to swim in public pools right now. The CDC says there are no scientific reports pointing to COVID-19 spreading through water and pools or hot tubs. But another factor you might want to consider is whether the pool is inside or outside. The CDC says indoor spaces do present more risks. Moving on, national news here. President Biden says time will tell if his summit Wednesday with Russian President Vladimir Putin is successful. There was some progress on issues such as arms control, but the two sides seem to be far apart on other key issues, including cyber attacks. Natalie Brand reports from the White House. President Biden is back at the White House following his summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying the test of whether it was successful will come in the next several months. I did what I came to do. Among the takeaways, the two sides agreed to restart a strategic dialogue on nuclear arms control. We used to engage with them seriously when they were the Soviets on arms control. We weren't doing that. 
uh, over the past years. We need to again now. That's a useful thing. But on the issue of cyber attacks, tensions remain. In his news conference, President Putin refused to acknowledge Russia's role in recent cyber attacks, even though evidence says otherwise. I think just throwing out these insinuations at the expert level, that's, that's inappropriate. President Biden says he told Putin critical infrastructure should be off limits to cyber attacks, giving him a list of 16 U.S. infrastructure sectors from energy to water systems. And if in fact they violate these basic norms, we will respond. Experts on the region are skeptical the summit will change Russia's cyber activity and say it's really how the U.S. responds to future attacks that will be key. Will the Americans be able and willing to make the Kremlin pay a price that makes them pay attention? Right now, words are not going to get President Putin uh, to behave. Putin said he agreed to begin consultations on cybersecurity. In one other area of cooperation, the two sides also agreed to allow each other's ambassadors to return to their foreign posts. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. The two leaders also discussed a possible exchange of Russian and American prisoners. Pulaski County Sheriff's deputies are investigating after a body was found along a dirt road in College Station last night. Investigators say a driver called authorities after they turned off 3M Road and down Wrangell Road and noticed the body. Deputies have not identified that victim, but say it is a black male. No word yet on what could be the cause of death. There was also a body found in the Arkansas River, and the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says authorities got a call just before 6.30 Wednesday morning about it, and that's when fishermen reported they had found what appears to be a white man in the river near Murray Park in Little Rock. The body has been sent to the state medical examiner for an ID and to find out a cause of death. Well, in other news, one is good, but two is better when it comes to a life-saving resource. Central Arkansas already has one, but a second one could be here soon. We're talking about baby boxes. The Safe Haven Baby Box is a drop-off point for anyone with young kids they can't take care of. Benton Fire Department has one, and Maumel could be getting one if they can raise the funds. The boxes cost about $15,000, and they're about five grand short right now. Maumel's fire chief says having one of these is a natural next step in being helpful to the community. I can't imagine being in a woman's shoes and, and having to make that difficult decision to give up their child, but at least this way they know they have a safe avenue um, to give their child up and they know it's going to be well taken care of. The boxes are discreet and safe for the infants placed inside. Fundraising information for the boxes is at THV11.com. Well, if you're looking to buy a bike this summer, you may be out of luck. A cycling boom sparked during the pandemic and it continues. As Nichelle Medina explains, manufacturers are struggling to supply products as more people are eager to enjoy the outdoors. This is where usually we have bikes for sale and we don't have any. Jason Dorman has never seen a bike shortage like this before. This is pretty much what I've been getting every day. We're just out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Dorman's family-owned store, Summit Ski and Cycle in Los Angeles, ran out of inventory last year, putting the brakes on business. We're definitely not making that much money, but we're just making enough to survive right now. It's a similar problem across the U.S. The pandemic slowed bike production and manufacturers have yet to catch up. At the same time, demand skyrocketed last year and isn't slowing down. We're seeing numbers that um, are just jaw dropping. Matt Powell from the market research firm NPD Group says sales between December 2020 and February grew 55 percent compared to the same time during the prior year. And it's not just bikes. Americans are buying products for a variety of outdoor activities. We're seeing camp furniture, grills, coolers, hammocks, recreational tents, all very strong. And then, of course, the, the cycling business has been outstanding. When do you think you will have bikes to sell? I imagine it won't be till next year. Until then, Dorman is switching gears, focusing on bike repairs when he can get parts. Bikes would have to sit here for an extra couple weeks just waiting on a part when usually we get it done in one day. Dorman plans to ride things out and is hopeful that new inventory will soon spin out of his showroom. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, Los Angeles. They said electric bikes are also seeing a major spike in sales.